Hello everyone, my name is Hernan Cuevas and in this presentation I'll be sharing the findings of an in vitro study of inhaled illiprose delivery using a mesh nebulizer that was modified and equipped with a breast activated function to enhance drug delivery. But before moving on to the outline, I'll first like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to present our research in this event. The outline has been divided in five major parts. In the first section, I'll introduce the objective of this research, along with the background of the topics under the scope of the study. After that, I will provide a brief introduction on our methodology, and then move into the results, discussion, and some specific points that form part of our conclusion. In this research, the initial objective was to examine the delivery of an inhaled drug called Illoprost using two mesh nebulizers, one operating under continuous delivery and another functioning with press actuation. The second objective was then to demonstrate the efficacy of the breast actuated device in order to present an alternative candidate for the delivery of inhaled illoprost, which is currently used to treat pulmonary arterial hypertension. As part of the background information, let's begin with pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. This is a condition primarily characterized by high pressure in the lungs. As shown on the right-hand side images, the disease progress results in the narrowing, blocking, and even destruction of the vessels in the lungs. The circulation resistance that results from these conditions can potentially lead to right heart failure. Although in some cases, the causes of pulmonary arterial hypertension are unknown, in others, it is considered as heritable or associated to a series of other conditions, such as congenital heart disease, liver disease, blood clot in the lungs, and HIV. Inhaled illoprose has long been used in the treatment of PAH. This compound is a synthetic analog of prostacycline, which has effects on dilating blood vessels. Illoprose is recommended by the World Health Organization as monotherapy in patients with functional class 3. Ventavis, the trained name of illoprose for inhalation, is usually prescribed to be administered between 6 to 9 times a day with an appropriate nebulizer. Currently, there are two mesh nebulizers in the US and Europe that are recommended for the use of Ventavis. Both of these devices aerosolize the compound supported by a breast actuated function, taking between 2.6 to 10.9 minutes to complete treatment. Two presentations with nominal doses of 2.5 and 5 micrograms per milliliter are available in the market with two different concentrations. The vibrating mesh nebulizer Dipro was used in this study. The model HCM860 was used to perform testing under continuous mode, while a modified device with identical specifications, other than counting with a breast actuated pressure sensor system, was used to perform testing under breast actuated mode. The breast actuated mechanism in this modified device contains an additional pressure sensor that is located below the mesh module but connected to the mouthpiece. During inhalation, suction creates a negative pressure that is sensed by the pressure sensor. This change sends a feedback to the mesh module which activates the oscillation of the mesh membrane within a specific time frame to maximize drug intake. During exhalation, an opposite response is sent to the mesh module when the negative pressure is canceled and oscillation is stopped, intending to reduce the amount of fugitive aerosol that is released in the environment. As part of the in vitro study, Ventavis or inhaled illoprost with a concentration of 20 micrograms per 2 ml was used for testing. The Dipro and modified Dipro devices were both tested with Ventavis in order to obtain aerosol characteristics and deliver dose. First, 
a breathing simulator and HPLC analysis were used to calculate the required volume to reach nominal doses of 2.5 and 5 micrograms with both devices. From these results, the calculated volumes were filled again and nebulization time was conducted. For particle size distribution analysis, the laser diffraction particle sizer spray tech was used to obtain volume medium particle size, fine particle fraction, and geometric standard deviation. Several runs were required to calculate the exact volumes for the two desired nominal doses. This table summarizes the volume and nebulization time required for the nominal doses of 2.5 and 5 micrograms. As it can be observed, the volume when using the modified breast actuated device was between 13 and 25% lower than when using the continuous mode device. When it comes to the nebulization time, although the required time to obtain 2.5 micrograms nominal dose for the modified device was 13 seconds longer than for continuous mode, the opposite was observed when targeting nominal dose of 5 micrograms, as the time needed with the continuous mode device nearly doubled, but the modified breast actuated device only increased by 30 seconds. Particle size distribution analysis performed with spray tank was conducted in triplicates with a continuous mode function as the mesh and the main unit specifications of both devices were identical, other than the breast actuated mechanism. The table in this slide summarizes the aerosol values, showing that the volume medium particle size was around 4.29 micrometers, there was a fine particle fraction over 60%, and the geometric standard deviation stood at 1.74. From the findings of this research, we can conclude that the modified breast actuated mesh nebulizer DPRO could successfully deliver ILOPROS in an in vitro study within reasonable treatment times. These factors are very important because they are indicators that could lead to improvements when it comes to patient adherence. The volumes required to reach the commonly prescribed nominal doses were also much smaller with the modified DPRO, since the breast actuated function allowed to reduce fugitive aerosol emission. Similarly, nebulization time was also shown to be comparable or lower than when using a continuous mode device, falling within the range of other recommended commercially available products in the market. Last but not least, particle size distribution analysis also shown that aerosol characteristics were suitable for proper line deposition in the in vitro test. The positive findings of this study can be taken into consideration to perform analysis of other compounds, especially when the target is to reduce the volume or amount of an active pharmaceutical ingredient reduce fugitive aerosol emission, or reduce the nebulization time. To finish this presentation, and on behalf of our team, I would like to thank Dr. Wu for assisting us with the HPLC analysis experiments, and Dr. Chen from Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital for providing assistance on the selection of ILOPROS. Thank you very much.